Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Um, we are going to be talking some 007 again here today. I have a special guest who has joined me on a lot of 007 videos. Uh, this is Alex from uh, Action Movie Guys podcast. How are you? How are you doing tonight? I'm doing pretty good, man. How you been? Good. It's been a while since you've been back on. Glad to have you back. Hey. On. Yeah, it's going to be more. Don't worry. Now I have tons of time for us to yeah. do more collabs. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, I think when I think when the new movie comes out, we'll I'll bring you back on for a spoiler review. So, yeah, um, that would be fun. That yeah. would be great. Yeah, definitely. Speak, but speaking of the newer movies, today is going to be a retrospective on the Daniel Craig era of Bond. Um, I've already reviewed the Daniel Craig movies. He joined me on one of the Daniel Craig movies, the Casino Royale yeah. review. Um, but this is mostly just us giving our thoughts on, uh, the error as a whole, uh, what we want to, maybe what we want to see in, um, no time to die. I mean, I, my cousin and I already did a video about that, but I haven't gotten your thoughts on that as to what you want to see. I guess what the future of bond might be too, especially now it's owned by Amazon and yeah. whether or not, uh, they're going to continue with this like serialized story idea with the next actor if they're going to go back to an anthology series uh but let's just uh let's do just do some thoughts on the era itself and then we'll we'll give like brief thoughts on the movies and then we'll get into all the uh rest of the nitty-gritty stuff so um what is your thought on the daniel craig era or thoughts on the daniel craig era so far I think uh, as of right now, like any fan that watches all of them, right, one through 24, mm -hmm. um, they're going to say Daniel Craig has the best movies, which is yeah. rightfully, you know, rightfully so. He has better writers, better scenery, yeah. better cars and women. And, you yeah. know, the list goes on. Right. Yeah. Um, I will say that he put a stamp on the entire franchise in terms mm -hmm. of the way he portrayed the character. Right. Um, I still love Be Pierce Bronson. Uh, you know that. Yep. Um, I love Roger Moore and I love Sean Connery. I'm not, that's never going to take away those guys. But remember, these movies are in different eras. We right. live in his era and right. Pierce Bronson era. So right. those two guys will always be significant. Like in, in when I talk Bond. Yeah. But as a whole, this guy changed the landscape yeah. of the way he portrayed Bond. And yeah. For the better, yeah, I agree. So yeah. that's what I, I think of it. He put a stamp, his own stamp, and it's and it's awesome, right? Because it's not him jumping in the shoes of Sean Connery, Roger Moore, Timothy Dalton, right. like none of those guys. This guy made his own bond grittier. Um, that's what we got with it, and and I liked it. At the at first I was a little like, ah, but I think now we all I were. <laughs> yeah, 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 I guess yeah, I, I, I did. Dude, I mean, like, think about it. Like, everybody hated that casting. Everybody's like, Daniel Craig, who's this guy? Like, the the, yeah. the dude from Tomb Raider who faked an American <laughs> accent. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, and then everybody was just like, no, like, he's not Bond. He's blonde. He's got blue eyes. Like, yeah. but then, as we know, with casting decisions now, wait until you see the movie because I'm pretty sure people yeah. are saying the same thing about Pattinson as Batman. Um, wait until you see the movie because he completely blew me away um he's also portrayed bond differently in each of the movies if uh calvin dyson actually brought this up on one of his videos um and i, I and i have to agree because i just recently rewatched all of them and okay. I, ha I have to agree with him so casino royale is like is obviously like the beginning of bond's career how he got his double o uh status yep. his first mission so he's obviously a little more reckless um new to the job trying to extract information any way he can quantum of solace takes that to a different level where he's out for revenge he's a little he's slightly more seasoned but he's more of a ruthless killing machine and more of a cold-blooded killer in that regard then you take it to skyfall and craig portrays him more as the suave smooth yet still not quite there, but burnt out and starting to hate his job type of Bond. And then you take it to Spectre, and that is like the Bond that we know, you know? Um, and that's how Craig has portrayed it. So I'm, it's curious to, I'm curious to see how he's going to portray him in the new one, especially since Bond's been out of the game for a while. I think, yeah. the, new one, I think the new one takes place about like five years after uh, Spectre. 
So it's going to be interesting to see how his performance in each movie, I guess, evolves um, and how, I guess, the character evolved too um, in terms of taking it from this, I guess, reckless rookie to the seasoned assassin to the suave Bond that we all know. Um, in terms of the era itself, these are the first movies. These movies will always be special to me. I, and I'm with you. I'm a Pierce Brosnan guy. I grew up watching the Pierce Brosnan movies at home, playing GoldenEye 64 on my Nintendo 64, throwing Trevelyan off that antenna cradle a million <laughs> times. Um, but the, yeah. Craig one, the Craig ones will always, I think, be a little bit more special to me because of the first ones I saw in theaters. Um, okay. so, yeah. so, like, when the new one comes out, it's gonna I'm going to probably end up shedding a tear, you know, because it's going to be... It's going to be, it's, it's something special for me. And especially where, sorry, I'm charging my laptop. Um, no, it's okay. But I do agree with you on this though. I do agree that to me, see, I started when I was watching him. Yeah, I did watch all of those on VHSs and all that. Yeah. I, I didn't hit the theater to watch Bond until Die Another Day. But then when I met my wife. What a great first experience. <laughs> yeah. Basically it was Die Another Day. And then. Once I met my wife, we watched it from Casino Royale all the way to the latest. So, yeah. and then of course, you know, I'm having a, a daughter, so I don't think I'm going to be able to see the No Time to Die in theater. I'm going to try to, because I'm having a newborn, so I don't know. But it's going to be rough. But I'm going to try. Are you, are you still <laughs> locked down? Huh? Are you? Are you still? What do you mean? Do you still have like restrictions for the because of the pandemic or? No, 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 no. I'm, well, I'm having a baby. We're, we're having a new... Oh, uh, oh, a new, oh, gotcha. Yeah, so it's going to be hard to get a, a babysitter to see. So when I when the movie does come out, for me and her to go. But I might have to just wiggle it, uh, try to go because of the review. So I might have to just go without her. But yeah. me and her together, we've seen all of them, just like you. So it, it is going to be very emotional uh, roller coaster when, when we see the entire arc close yeah. with Danny Craig. Yeah. yeah, it's just, it, it's just something that I don't think any of us really expected. Like they they were the movies we needed. I mean, after Die Another Day, um, I'm not a huge I'm not a fan of Die Another Day at all. I think it's so mm. bad it's terrible. Um, yeah. I mean, even the producers admitted it. They were like, we needed to do Casino Royale after Die Another Day because we knew we were getting too fantastical. Um, we had to take it back to the roots. Quantum of Solace kind of took it more of a felt. I, I when I rewatched it, I have I I felt this way, but I haven't felt this strongly about it. Where it's definitely a Bourne movie, not a Bond movie. Um, hey, that was Paul Greengrass, right? Uh, Director for Quantum. Yeah. No, it was. I think it was. Was it? Was, it? No, it was Mark Forster. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, didn't he do a Bourne, a Bourne movie? No, he didn't. No, he's. I don't think oh, he ever. Okay. I don't think Mark Forster's ever done an action movie. Like he was oh, not right. a he was not a James Bond fan until he saw <laughs> Casino Royale. So I was like, "Well, uh, uh, probably should have learned how to edit your movie, buddy." Um, <laughs> yeah, that to me is the weakest one out of all of them. It yeah. is Quantum Same of Solace. Here. Yeah, great opening. <laughs> I love the opening. With the card, the, the, the card, Martin. the car chase. Awesome. Car chase grows on me with each rewatch of Quantum of Solace. I don't love the car chase, but it grows on me. Yeah, I don't know why it always grew on me because when when the movie theater it, when once the theater opened, all you hear was and I was the, begin like, oh, the beginning of the car chase. The beginning of the car chase, I think, is terrible because it's poorly edited. Mm -hmm. But once you get past like the once the music starts kicking in, that's where it gets better. Yeah, I mean, some of the stunts there, I was just like, ah, when he flips the car, the door flows off, yeah. and I'm like, this dude is shooting, <laughs> shooting you point blank <laughs> with machine guns. And yeah. you're not getting hit with the door wide open. But look, it is what it is. To me personally, I think it's the weakest, but it's a very um, telling movie because we got to remember Bond um, in, in Casino Royale, he had his armor taken down with Viper, uh, with Vesper. Yeah. Um, because remember, she she's the only one that penetrated to him in terms of his like loving someone and right. caring. Mm -hmm. Um, and then in Quantum, the shields went right back up, and you yes. saw it. He just got right. become angry. Bond. Well, it was, the, it, was the first, it was the first time you ever saw Bond drunk in a movie. Um, That's true. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. I remember he's on the plane, and uh, 
what's his face? Mathis asked the bartenders, like, how many has he had? Six of them. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And then he made the drink, right? Didn't he? he yeah, made I think he was drink making another drink. drink. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a, it's a very unique, you know, it, it, it's the weakest, but it's very detrimental to the Bond character development. Yeah. In terms, if you know what I mean. Like, especially, in terms of the especially, especially when you look at the fact that Spectre ties the previous three together, which I think in a way, I think I'm 50, 50 on, and we'll, I guess we'll talk about it when we talk about Spectre. I'm 50, 50 on. Cause I think it was both a benefit and then a mistake as well, but we, we can talk about it when we get there. Um, I mean, by far the best movie though, is Casino Royale best action scenes in any of his movies. I mean, the parkour chase alone is just top-notch Bond. I mean, that's just top-notch action filmmaking. Yeah, I mean, to me, you know, it's very rough for me because I, it's tied between Skyfall. I am very big on Skyfall. I see I Skyfall too. in the theater uh, two or three times. I, I, I think don't I would, much, I would take, yeah. I think I would take Skyfall in terms of, like, an actual, like, movie movie, like, filmmaking, like, oh, like, the cinematography, the editing, acting directing like it is score yeah score score uh well score uh i i might give the score to casino royale on that one but like if i want to watch like some sweet action scenes i'm gonna watch casino royale because yeah. skyfall like not none of the action scenes other than the opening uh the pre-title sequence of skyfall none of the action scenes really blew me away in sky really yeah i mean really? the court the courtroom yeah. one's not bad I like that, the court- that, but that scene is significant though. That, yeah, that scene is I very know. significant because what a lot of people from what I interpret, you, you know, every me and you got different interpretations in a lot of scenes because you know that's how yeah. we are as movie reviewers, right? Right, right. As I interpret that scene, is I'm back in the game. Because yeah. remember, prior to that, M, well, he wasn't M at the time. Um he was like, this dude is old. Like, he doesn't have it no more. Yeah. Like, why did you give him the double O? And we all know Judy Dench is a mother to this guy. So she's going to give him the double O status because she knows Bond right. delivers. Remember, he's drunk. Right. He's half dead. Th- this th- guy will get his job done. I think um, I, I think what sells that action scene for me is a couple of things. One, they don't make it too big. They make it more small scale more isolated like within the courtroom there's actually a sense of danger because you're in a public hearing so like all the yeah. government officials are like literally like ducking under tables while Silva's coming in shooting up the place and i think what sells it for me too is the music because like once once he shoots mallory in the shoulder the music kicks in it's like dun, dun, but then and then the shootout starts and then bond comes in it's like dun, 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 dun. yeah yeah yeah, and then he shoots the two. Uh, the, he shoots the 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 one fire extinguisher. And then he yeah. looks at M, the the old, you know, the M, the new one. He yeah. looks at him and winks him, going yeah. like, "Look, my man is back." And then he starts walking while shooting to get his boss out of there. I, I know, was like, this yeah. dude got balls, yeah. bro. Like, <laughs> He's just like I think, walking. I think that. I think that one and the pre-title sequence, I think, are the ones that stick out in Skyfall for me. But okay. And that and I think that's why I might put and yeah, it's part of the reason I would put Skyfall just slightly above Casino Royale, but Casino Royale for me has the better action. Like uh, the parkour yeah. the parkour chase is amazing. I love yeah. the chase in the airport. Um the oh, yeah. well yeah. fight's great. The ending action scene in Venice is great. The car, the car when the he's car driving flip. to get oh, yeah. the, the which at the, the time I think at the time I wanted when, a- at the time of release, I think it set the record for uh, most car flips. flips. Movie. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I mean, I totally agree with you. Like, Casino, and I'm not taking it away from no. Like, oh, I no. love Casino Royale. Like, I oh, will yeah. always put that damn thing on. But in yeah. terms of they're both so equal, and I think this is where it comes down to the individual that is watching Bond. Do you want storytelling? Then you go Skyfall. If you want yeah. action and storytelling, you yeah. go Casino Royale yeah. because each movie gives you that adrenaline kick that you want. You want yeah. Bond when he's just not even a, a double O. He's just a ruthless, um, right. a rugged, not even seasoned double O. Bam, you throw in Casino Royale. You right. want him at his prime. My man came back and he knows <laughs> the game in and out. You throw in Skyfall. My man shaved Dude. and he was like, oh, that's it. It's, it's over. 
I've, and here's how I've always equated Skyfall too, because there were like rumors before release that Sam Mendes was like tr- cutting action scenes out of like the script or like the movie or something. Whether or not that's true, who knows? Um, yeah, yeah. But the way Skyfall plays out is that there's not a lot of action sequences in it. So for me, it's always kind of felt more like the older Bond films or like a GoldenEye, like more of like an action thriller, I guess. Not, I wouldn't, I wouldn't classify it as straight up an action movie. It would be more of like an action thriller. You know, I agree with you on that. And you know what's crazy though? What I felt like when I was watching Skyfall, it felt more of a novel book now yeah right because yeah. It, it didn't feel like a movie like you wasn't watching a movie you were right. watching a novel like a, a, a right. like a straight like you're reading and it's not much action it's just character development all over the place oh, from yeah. bond to m to the new m to money penny to you know all that you're getting in this and i was like this is to me why i think it's going to be very difficult for no time to die to wrap up Because you gave us this masterpiece, and I'm calling it a masterpiece. This masterpiece of Skyfall and Casino Royale, but this one is a masterpiece in storytelling. How can you wrap it up? I I, like it's definitely gonna tell a task. Here's here's my thing. It doesn't have to be as good as Casino Royale or Skyfall, but if it still is a top five Bond film, I'll be fucking happy. Yeah, and I don't want no. This is what I don't want from No Time to Die. And I don't want no throwing shit in there because this is his final movie. Because then I'm going to be really mad. I don't want to see Bond with a daughter. If he has a kid or whatever. I don't want to see none of that yeah. at all. I don't want to see because that, you're taking away our character. The character that everyone loved. You're going to give him a, someone that he, you know, someone that he didn't know that he have, or I don't even know how that's going to work if it does, Right. Are you going to kill that off in the movie? Because remember, he got would, married in the Her Secret Majesty servant yeah. and she got killed at the end of the movie. I would be right? I, would, I would be fine with Bond having a daughter as long as there's a good enough reason and it's presented well. Yes, but you don't want it to be like he's in the adventure with her oh, and it yeah, finds yeah, out yeah. at the end that yeah. that's his daughter. Like, that's fucking... Like, I'm tired of that cliche. Yeah, like, yeah. they're doing the same things together and all of a sudden... He yeah. finds out that's his daughter, that he might sacrifice himself or yeah. he might do because then I'm gonna be angry. I'm like, come on, man. Like, you really did not know that your daughter, like you work in the CIA, you got all these connections. Like, right. you're not gonna have someone <laughs> to tell you the DNA of this person. Right. Um, so that's the only thing I have. Other than that, look, I'm okay with the with the the with the the, the person that's taking his number, the the female. Oh, yeah. I'm okay with that because it's just a number. People were exactly, and people think not it. People think James Bond, the name is the code name. It is not the code name. Like it is very clear. There is no indication from any of the other older movies that this is supposed to be a different person. Like because why would Roger Moore be visiting the dead wife of George Lazenby? Yeah. Like, and then why would, why would they reference the fact that in License to Kill, that Bond was once married when Timothy Dalton plays Bond? Yeah. And that's the thing. It's like, what people got to understand is they're all the same character with different people uh, playing the character. Pretty much. Think of it like a play. Like, that's pretty much it. Did they expect Sean Connery to play him for, until he was 90 and on his deathbed? Yeah, and that's the thing. It's like you guys, and I know people are gonna be. And trust me, I already, I already could see the future where in no time to die. People are gonna be pissed with the old female, the double seven, and then all this crap is gonna start coming to light. I personally don't care. I, don't I just care. want to see how we end Daniel Craig's Bond yeah. swan song. I don't, I don't care. I don't really care about her being uh, 007 either. Because here's why. For me, the best of Bond girls are the ones that are the more fleshed out characters like Vesper, Natalia. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I'll even throw Madeline Swan in there. And as much as I don't like Quantum of Solace, uh, I, I like she was all right. Yeah. I like Camille in that movie. You know, I mean, she's not yeah. the greatest, but I mean, she's at least has she at least does stuff on like Dominic Green. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. I totally agree with you. Um, but but 
my and, and another thing is is like if you're gonna write Daniel Craig out, please do it in a way that it's very respectful to the Bond fans. Yeah. Don't do it in a way that it's like you're gonna shit on us and then I, you have to put someone have, else to replace I have him. No, I think I think this movie is going to get trippy because it's Kerry yeah. Fukunaga. Like I think he's going like he had the idea of writing the entire movie inside of Bond's head when he's getting tortured in Spectre by uh, Oberhaus or Blofeld, whatever the hell you want to call him. Yeah. Um, so that was an idea he had. So I'm like, I think this is going to get trippy. And who knows? I mean, I personally, I think the plot's going to involve cloning. Uh, I think Safin's, I think Safin's going to try and clone himself. And if what they've said about the opening scene is true, it makes sense. Uh, yeah. they, they just have to pull it off in a way that makes sense. Um, but here's what I don't want. I don't want Safin to be Dr. No. Uh, yeah. But my thing is that I don't want. I don't want yeah, him I to don't, be Dr. I want no. them to do their own. Yeah. I'm, fi- I'm, I'm cool with them bringing back Blofeld. I'm fine with that. But other than that, do your own thing with the villains. Don't. My thing with the Blofeld was I did not mind Blofeld. Right. I just hated the fact that Blofeld was his stepbrother. I think it that gets, pissed me off. I think it gets blown out. <laughs> I think it gets blown out of proportion because, like, yeah, yeah, like it bothers me when I watch it, but it doesn't bother me to the extent that it does with other people. I just, I think it gets yeah. blown out of proportion though because when Bond has those temporary guardian, I did like a whole video essay on this, and unfortunately, copyright issues blocked it. And I'm not even going to fight it. I'm not even going to bother. But like mm. when Bond has those guardianship papers at the beginning, it's very clear that it says temporary guardian is the Oberhausers, mm. but his full legal guardian is his aunt, uh, Charmaine Bond. So, and then the movie also references the fact that Bond was only with the Oberhausers for a couple of years. So it's not like it was, it's not like he was adopted when he was like five or something and spent his entire childhood and some of his adulthood with the family. It was just, they were good friends with the Bond family and Bond spent a couple winters there with them. And that's kind of how I look at it. Like, I don't necessarily look at it as like, it's, it's not the worst thing in my opinion. Um, I mean, it's not the greatest thing, but I think that's why it gets a little blown out of proportion. I think, but I think what's worse is the fact that the movie leads us for the entire time. And I'm somebody that defends Spectre too. I have my problems with it and this is one of my problems, but I defend the movie because I, I actually do like it. Um, But this is one of my problems. And I think this is worse than the foster brother thing. The movie leads us to believe that there's this guy Oberhauser who's the head of this super secret organization from the moment he pops up you know it's Blofeld just say he's Blofeld don't go on this whole freaking I don't know trope that Hollywood movies were doing in the mid 2010s like 2013 to I don't know probably 16 because Star Trek Into Darkness is also a victim of this trope uh where the main where you cast a really popular actor at the time in a popular franchise and you name the movie something like in this this instance the movie's named specter so you cast christoph waltz as the villain and it's like oh he's playing blofeld but then the villain is actually named oberhauser it's like so is he blofeld or not but then the whole movie it's like oh this is oberhauser and then the twist comes where it's like my name is not Franz Oberhauser. It's Ernst Stavro Blofeld. And, but like, I would be cool with that if it had an actual impact on the story. No. It does not. Nor does that twist that John Harrison is Khan in Star Trek Into Darkness have an impact on the story. It's just there to be a big eye wink at the audience. Be like, oh, hey, look who's back. Be like, yeah, we knew this. From the beginning, just call him Blofeld from the beginning. Yeah, I agree with you. And the problem is, is that we live in a digital world that elites. So yeah. it's not like you're, you're, it's not like you're, you're shocking people because everyone is posting his Blofeld. And then when you watch the movie, you're like, okay, I totally agree with you. I like Spectre. Why? Because I think Spectre is a retrospect of the original, like Roger yeah, Moore it's, era. It's, it's, it's a throwback. Those. It's a throwback classic yes. Bond movie. 
yeah, when you see him flying the plane, he loses the wings, but he's still chasing the car. That's a that's a trope. That's a, a Bond trope from like the sixties and seventies, yeah. and I loved it. I was clapping. I was the only one clapping. Oh, uh, I was into it, and people yeah. thought I was nuts. And I was <laughs> yeah, like, okay. I, mean, I, I I'm I'm always into like the actual like story of that movie like oh how like the double o section is going to get shut down because it's irrelevant because we live in a digital age and there's this yeah. whole and a lot of people complain about specter's plan how it's like oh it's not big enough but i'm like i don't think it was ever meant to be like this big grand master plan like this is the reintroduction of specter after so many years like i get it like they should probably be a bit more menacing but i i kind of look at this as like this is the rebooted bond era's version of specter like the modern era of specter like build them up a little bit like show how they can get a little bit more evil like starting off by funding a global surveillance network so that they can counteract like intelligence and do their super secret shady terrorist stuff in the background i'm like that's still pretty fucking awful like when you think about it like that's they're and it falls into their category of what they stand for. I mean, they never explain what Spectre stands for in the movie, but like yeah. C in Spectre stands for counterintelligence. Like they're literally counteracting intelligence from nine countries. Yeah, I mean, look, I, like I said, I'm in the minority when it comes to the movie. I still like it. I enjoy it. I don't like the chick in the movie, but it is what it is. Um, yeah. I, I that's an, I still I still think the strongest female in the entire Daniel Craig is Vesper. Oh. I think she was the yeah I think she's the best one um and then comes the one from Spectre because I think she had a better storyline than the other chicks across um yeah. the board but yeah I mean I just think Daniel Craig is legacy as 007 is going to be the totem pole where it comes to any actor that dons the suit so it's not going to be Sean Connery. It's not going to be, you know, Roger Moore, unless the movies are catered that era. Yeah. Then maybe, but no one is not because everyone's the last image of 007 is Daniel Craig, uh, Daniel yeah, Craig from it's, Casino it's Royale gonna, all the way to. The it's going to be a hard era to live up to. And he's going to be a tough actor to live up to as well. Cause it's like, it's yeah. like he really re revisioned like the character. Yeah. Like when I, it's, it's rough. Yeah. When I think of Bond, I, I think of Sean Connery and Daniel Craig, like, cause though I think those two are the two best. Like, I, I don't think one is better than the other. I think they're equal. And a lot of people probably won't say that. Uh, but, and I never thought that until I saw Skyfall because I thought Craig's performance in Skyfall was really great. Yeah. I mean, mine won't be Sean Connery and Daniel. Uh, mine will be Daniel Craig, but I think more Piers Bronson. Yeah. Then uh with Bronson, Daniel Craig because Bronson's three. I I think the, the problem with Bronson is and, and I could be me and I don't want to put words on people's mouths, but my, my idea is that his movies were far fetch, right? It was all gadgets, it was all this. But I think if you would have took him and put him in the Daniel Craig one of his movies let's just give him one of his movies right and you put him in it he will fit because he had the sexy look he had the he has, the, he, like has he was the, suave he has the um but i the problem with brosnan that i have is that i don't think he has the toughness like he had the toughness i look i look at i look at connery and craig and I'm just like, you guys have the charm, but I wouldn't want to box you on the street because you look like you're just going to randomly fight somebody just to have a scrap, you know? Whereas Brosnan, like, I love Brosnan as Bond, but, like, at the same time, I'm like, he never has a scratch on him, you know? Right. I mean, because that's the point of the, and that's the thing, that with that era, remember, in the 90s era, all the heroes were leaving unscathed, right? From, like, Con Air with Nicolas Cage, <laughs> yeah. and, and, you know what I mean? Eraser with an Arnold Schwarzenegger. Like, these dudes were coming out of, like, the woodworks without even touched. Yeah. But, if you look at his movies, right? Because it, it, just like Craig, right? If you look at his movies, you could you could point where he, he becomes the badass, where he's in his prime. If you look at the the Pierce Bronson, he is pissed off. Like there's a uh, tomorrow never dies. He's angry. He's yeah. angry. Bond. He so, was like, with get the, the I fuck say, out my way, Bond. I would and, say, I would say, same with World's Not Enough. I think, I think World's Not Enough. That's an underrated movie. 
Yeah, I think World is Not Enough is the darkest they've ever written Pierce Brosnan. I think I think Goldeneye is the most serious that they've written Brosnan. And yeah. I think it, I think it's cuz they were trying to tailor make it to Dalton. Um I think they were planning on having Dalton star in that movie and I think they had to rewrite a lot of aspects of the script to make it fit with Dalton but then obviously he resigned in came Brosnan so it, essentially like I kind of look at that as Dalton's third movie yet Brosnan's first movie as well um and then Tomorrow Never Dies I'm not a fan of Tomorrow Never Dies honestly um it's gone really? down. yeah no nah, just because there's no mystery you know you you're told everything right off the right right off the bat after the credits Bond's not investigating anything and there's this general Chang guy who's in the movie for five minutes, but he's so integral to the plot. Like, where is he? Uh, you know, and, but I, that's how it ties to Die Another Day because you knew the character from Tomorrow Never is that Dies. The same character? Yeah, General Chang. Yeah, that's the same guy. Exactly the same character. And that's the thing. See, like a lot of people overlook it. Yes, but those characters are intertwined. You know, um, and, and that's the thing that works. And and I mean, look, I'm not taking it away from nobody. I just personally think from Tomorrow Never Dies and The World Not Enough, those are the two darkest and the two pissed off bonds you're going to get where they killed Paris, his friend, his lover, whatever you want to call it. He got really angry after that. Yeah. Then in The World Not Enough, they stole M, you know, they kidnapped her and he was pissed off Bond. He was like, hell no. Blood. Huh? Kills Electra in cold blood. Killed her, yeah, because he is basically she she betrayed him, and he was like, "Oh hell no!" And you took my boss. Like this ain't happening. And yeah. that's the thing. It's like a lot of people overlook those two movies. I totally understand your points on on those things, but those two points, those two movies, are very significant to Pierce Bronson because those two movies are the serious out of the four movies. Are yeah. Tomorrow Never Dies and The World's Not Enough, where I as you maybe will say, is the most underrated one out of all four of them. Um, if you really yeah. look at it, I think it's the best story out of all three of the movies. One world's, world's um, yeah, the one with Elektra. Um, GoldenEye is everyone's favorite. I, I like GoldenEye. I love it. But that. If, you, if you look at the storyline, the world is not enough. I think is more solid they, than Golden Knight. They attempted to take it back to like the nuclear meltdown and like nuclear plot, yeah. like the older ones, you know. Yeah. So They're, to me, I just felt like it was more natural Bond, whereas Golden Eye was just like he was a. And come on, think about it. You got an MI6 agent, right? Mm -hmm. Which was played by uh, Sean Bean, right? And it was nothing. It was just like he was not in the whole movie. My man came out in the last 45 <laughs> minutes of the movie, right? Like, and he's the main villain. Like, you're just like, and again, and that's the thing about writing in the era. If you would have took that storyline and you impacted, if you would have took that and you put that into this modern age writing, the entire movie, you would have saw that. The first 30 minutes would have been him and Bond doing whatever. And then all of a sudden, you get to see what he's doing, right? Because it's Skyfall. Yes, Javier Bardem is a double O supposedly, but he's not double O six. It's not significant. As where Goldeneye, them two were best friends. They shared everything. They shared women. I mean, that's what they said. But uh, to me personally, if they do bring that back, that storyline, I have a feeling it's going to be more impactful now mm -hmm. than what you got in Goldeneye with Pierce Bond. Hmm. That's just personally me. Because you're going to be more invested because of the writing. You know the spy scenes are going to be really good, them helping each other out. And then you're going to see where the turning point is. And now with this writing, the turning point is going to shock the shit out of you. You're going to, oh, damn, not like the whole, oh, you know, he's fast screening and his parents were from here. And I'm like, come on, man. Yeah. Well, like, you know, when you watch it, you're like, okay, cool. It's a cool movie. But now... I think there's more of a right. I think it's all about the writing in the in the generation that we're in when it comes to Bond movies. And I love it though. I'm not taking nothing away. The 90s is amazing. The yeah. 60s, the 70s, the 80s, all of them. Even George Lopez is one, which people should give him credit because the movie itself, I think it's okay. Not that horrible. A lot of it. A lot of it. Um, 
does get added onto the future of Bond. Here, you know, here, here's my problem, and I picked up on this the last time I watched it. I don't buy the love story between Bond and Tracy. You know why? Because Tracy's father literally forces it on Bond. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah. I don't even, I'm like, does Bond even really love Tracy? I mean, it's, except towards the end, I'm like, this whole thing is just being forced upon. And she doesn't. She she's repulsive. Like she she's trying to re, uh, she's trying to uh, reject him and all that. And she's like telling him like how oh you're like a horrible man and all that. But like I'm like I don't buy this. And then they have that stupid love montage. And, ugh. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Like it's again, it's in it, but it's it's at that era, yeah. Right. It was the era where it was written. But I'm not talking about like oh it's the it's it's okay. It's not yeah. as the worst that everyone makes it to. No, like, it's the worst Bond. Think... He's okay. Um. But it'll be high ranked up in the in in, in the movies though. <laughs> it'll be up there. Uh, the twenty in the in the twenties. I don't know where in the twenties, but it'll be up there in the twenties because Moonraker will go somewhere all the way to the top. Um, <laughs> I do not like Moonraker. Moonraker. I I, I I I like watching Moonraker for the first two thirds, and then when they go to space, I'm like, that's it. I'm done. Yeah, I fall asleep. I fall asleep every time they go to space. Yeah, I I'm with you. I fall asleep every time it goes to space. is boring. I'm like, oh my god, this movie is atrocious. Like, I cannot believe James Bond went to space. He broke orbit. <laughs> yeah, and it was cool that Black Widow uh, was watching Moonraker. Yeah, she was watching Moonraker. Yeah, I, I was like, okay, I like this. Now this movie is a top notch MCU for me. It got James Bond. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Six out of five. laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean but look it to, to i don't know if you want to wrap it up but in terms of of the the bond whoever sits in that action martin whoever dons that that tom ford suit um i can't wait i'm not gonna judge by trailer right I'm never gonna judge by trailer. I mean, I'm never gonna could. judge by like publicity stills either, because they have those publicity stills. I remember, that, I think I was in I was in middle school when Casino Royale came out. I was 13. There was this kid I was talking to who said he refused to see the movie because Bond didn't hold the gun in the poster. I'm like, that's fucking dumb. <laughs> You know what's funny? What got me like, mad was, but like, but like, that's how much people hated Daniel Craig back in the day. <laughs> and remember, during that Casino Royale, they were releasing that he refuses to drive on the left side of the the car, so they made it the right side, and people got pissed off. Yeah, and I'm like, the dude, it is what it is. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, who cares? But yeah. I guess you know England and whatever. But in the movie, he did drive in the left side. Because yeah, when yeah. he goes in the car, he was on the right side when he took out the defibrillator. Yeah. Right? Unless I'm well, going yeah, but crazy. I don't, think, I don't think the steering wheel was on the right side in that scene. He was just in the pa- he was in the passenger seat, I think. Oh, you know what? You might be right. Yeah, it was on the, the left side. It was like an American yeah, I, think, I, think every, I think all the cars in that movie, I think everything's on the left side. Yeah, and his Ashton Martin was on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look at that. Yeah, but anyway, I mean, I, I totally agree with you. I'm not going to judge the new Bond until I see. I'll see his body of work to see if it fits the mold. That's what I did with Robert Patterson. I have I never seen the Twilights, but I've seen like the Lighthouse. That. Yeah, like, yeah. I watched I mean, Lighthouse. Been and, in. I've, I've loved. I've loved Robert Patterson. Dude, even Robert yeah. Pattinson hates Twilight. So yeah, so I watched the lighthouse and that's the only movie i've seen with him and i was like you know what this is enough for me to go have you seen tennis yes. no i have not seen Ten- oh yeah tennis tennis yes i did see that yeah he was good in it um uh, but it was more the uh, jonathan davis uh washington this is more his performance in the movie yeah which he's amazing yeah i love, he's I a love great- denzel's son denzel's son is great yeah i hope they do a movie together um i don't know all the time but i wish they did a movie together that would be so awesome that'd be cool um like he's the villain. <laughs> you, know, you know who I've always envisioned Bond, playing Bond, and I don't know if Ooh. he can. I don't know if he can now because he's probably tied up and stuff. Tom Hiddleston, the guy who plays Loki. You know, like, I understand where you're going with it, but when he did Con, uh, Con, when he did uh, the Skull Island, yeah, it did not work for me. The action because yeah, I know him yeah. from Loki. 
Yeah, I get like I get it. Like he he has the look of Bond, but like yeah. I understand the argument when people say he's a little too scrawny. But I but like yeah, I think it could work out. Yeah, I think it all just depends on. I mean, I think you could you could probably be scrawny and play Bond. I mean. But look, let's just come on. We're not gonna talk body here because we know the Bonds did not yeah. have great physique. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they did not have great physique here. Exactly. Except Daniel Craig. Know, um, Other than that, I know a lot of people. Want, did. I know a lot of people want Henry Cavill, um, the guy who plays. Superman. Oh no! Um, I mean, he'll be great, but he's. Too I good. mean, my problem with Cavill is that again, I think he has the charm and he has the look. Um, and I think he has the toughness too. I I just don't think he's a great actor. <laughs> like I don't think his acting chops are that good. Um, I mean he he's improving. I'll say that he's improving because I think he was really good in Mission Impossible. Um, mm. but, and I think that that's by far his best performance. Um, but yeah, I mean I, he already did the Man from Uncle. I don't need to see him as a spy again. I like that movie. Yeah, I, I do. Like, it's a good movie. Yeah, in yeah. A, he was in Mission Impossible. I don't need to see him as in another spy. Sorry. I would pick Richard Madison if I had to pick one. Oh, yeah. The guy from The Bodyguard, Mark. the TV show. Yeah. yeah. He, when I watched that movie, or that TV show, whatever the hell it was, I was like, that is the new Bond. Like, I don't know why there doesn't take you 10 years not to give this guy the contract right yeah. now. Here's my, um, here's my thing. Here's why I haven't said anybody else other than Tom Hiddleston, because I'm terrible at fan casting. So <laughs> no, that's not, that's not your fault. I mean, I'm not great at it either. I, I just, yeah. I just look at it and be like, okay, this guy, I think he'll be great. Yeah. But it could be, I mean, I always wanted Ezra Alba. I wanted to go right off the, the deep end. I was like, you know what? Give me I, him. I think, he, I think he would be good, but I think he's too old now. Oh, no. Now he's too old. But when he was younger, oh, yeah. I would not mind. I would not mind him uh, yeah. to be in, like the, the dude. Um, I know people want Tom Harding, and now I'm too tired of Tom Harding. I don't, I don't want Tom. Tom Harding, you're going to talk like this. But he's getting <laughs> <from> long now. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. You know, I always say when it comes to Bond, pick unknowns, man. Because people could bitch about I think, it. I think that's then, what they kind of go for, you know? Because yeah. they didn't really know Daniel Craig beforehand. The only time I remember Daniel Craig, the only movie I saw with him in it, and I really like, I don't know if you've seen it, was Lair Cake. Oh, yeah. Well, they say that's the movie that won him Bond. Oh, that movie's freaking phenomenal. You guys have not great. seen it out here. Check out Lair Cake. I, yeah. I love Lair Cake. Lair Cake's great. And he uses the signature of, uh, is it Russia with Love Gun? The, the, yeah. the, the yep. gun that Sean Connery uses. So it's actually a pretty cool uh, movie. I love it. Yeah, it's a pretty good movie. Yeah. Um, what do you what do you think about the future after Daniel Craig's uh, tenure of Bond is up? Uh, or do you think they're still going to do like the serialized, like s- connecting like the story based movies for the next actor? Or do you think we'll take it back to more of like a standalone anthology format? I don't think it's I think each each actor is going to portray him at a time period. That's just my idea. Yeah. I think they will they're not gonna see, I would do that. I will do instead of we got we got the Daniel Craigs, right? If you really think about it, that could be your foundation. Why not hire someone that's younger and now go back in time and see him doing the training? See him meeting Blofeld when he's with that, you know, the little flashback of them little kids and doing all the shit that he hates him for. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. go back in time, him meeting Paris. Hitting from Then people go, oh, snap, that's Paris from, you know, Tomorrow yeah. Never Dies. You understand what I mean? Like, so much story that you could take, but we already know what's going to happen. They're going to try to reboot the damn thing again. And we're going to go from there again with a younger character. So for me personally... I agree with you. I think it's going to be standoff solos. I think I, I'm fine with them doing like a more like serialized, like connecting like the story type of thing, but I don't think they should do it right after Daniel Craig. I think they, I think they should take a little bit of a break, have the next actor do like standalone solo anthology type films. Maybe the after, maybe the actor after that as well. And then if they want to go back to like a more serialized version of storytelling then you can do it like i'm not i'm not opposed to it i just don't think it should happen right after daniel craig i agree with you and i don't want no tv show if you Uh, give me a 007 tv show i'm not watching it It, i don't care with this world we this world stands on its own perfectly 
Yeah, I don't want no TV show. How money? No Benny, young, like the no life young of money, Q? Benny. <laughs> yeah, I don't want the Q. How like Q I like Q. I love Q. I love. Yeah, Q. I love Q. If you bring him back with Money Penny, you bring her back, Naomi. I'm great. I'm cool. I'm like, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Don't give me no TV shows with them. I don't care for you know, that. You're gonna you're gonna hate me for saying this, but uh oh, I think because you said you love Q, I think yeah. this Q, this young Q, is going to, is going to die in the new one. I tell you this: if he dies, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> I'm getting. You know why? Yeah, I, and and it's gonna be very emotional for me because we all know Q and Bond is like yeah. so close with each other, but we didn't get that with these movies. And that's the thing. This movie, we never got Q and Bond relationship, right? Because the other movies, like from the one through all the Piers Brown thing, you got the relationship with Q, right? It was a continuous. This is a brand new story. So I don't think they have that type of relationship. Maybe they do, because remember, five years later, he's retired. So maybe through that whole gap, they, they, became they had it. They had they had it a little bit in Spectre, where it was kind of like that big, did. bickering back and forth, which was the classic yeah. Bond and Q bicker, you know. But then once that then you got to see see Bond is not more he's like me. I, I'm not an emotional type of dude. Uh yeah. my wife will tell you that I'm not as emotional. But when something happens, that's when I break down. So like when he when M died in his hands, I felt for him because yeah. I already knew me and him is that type of person. Like I would have broke down there too and he did. He right. broke that that's his mother right there. His mother figure just dying right, right. there. Right. So to me, that is very impactful. So if he does die, I think it's going to piss the shit out of him off to get him back. And you know what? You might be right. If they start the movie off with uh, with Q dying, I don't think you know. And that's what. But think about it. Let's say they start off the movie with him dying on a mission, right? And that's what brings Bond out of retirement, <laughs> right? Think yeah. about it. His one of his closest friends die. It's like, or, wait a minute, who did it? Or, or maybe Felix dies too, because I'm getting those vibes. Like Felix Leiter dies. Yeah. Well, he did die yeah. in license. From, people, so because well, from the trailers, he's only in like that. Like from what it looks like, he's only in that one section of the movie where he's in Jamaica, trying to get Bond to help him on the on the mission. So I'm like, where is he in the rest of the movie? Did like I'm, I'm thinking I'm like. He's either out of the picture or he's dead. You know what? I think you might be right. If it is Felix Leiter, it's still going to bring him out of retirement to try to find a killer that killed his best friend. Um, his best friend or his best, uh, you know, someone that annoyed him, but he still loved him as a friend, Q. Um, so I always like, what is it? Which one is it? Um, when he goes, Oh, yeah, we got the car ready, and then when they pull the car up, you see the, the champagne bottle, and he goes, Oh, shit. <laughs> he stole the Aston Martin, and that was that was, uh, Spectre, yeah, yeah, Inspector. I loved it. Oh, yeah, that's because they took away all his gadgets. He was like, Oh, Q, you shouldn't not have. He was, Oh, no, this is not for you. <laughs> I thought that was all like, I loved that, those scenes. Oh, it was just so funny. And that's one of my favorite parts of Spectre that that car was not meant for Bond, it was meant for 009. Yeah, that's and he was just it. like, <laughs> that's so funny. But he was so happy. because That, that car chase, though, in Spectre is so goddamn boring. Yeah, it's not as a, it's, like it's I wanted It's a giant car but... commercial with them going. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, fire here, you know, whatever. I, I was, I'm, I'm with you on that. I wasn't too crazy with it. But I just thought that setup to the car scene was just too funny. Yeah. He was just so like so happy, kid in the candy <laughs> store. He was like, "Kid, Q, you shouldn't have happy." He was like, "No, that's not for you." <laughs> he goes, "You're like not working really." Like, what did he I say? Said, you? I think I said, "Bring it back in one piece." Don't bring back one piece. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man, you you could quote these movies if you're really oh, big into the franchise. You could quote these movies. Yeah, so good. I'll send you a postcard. Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or remember when M dies and she leaves him the dog that he hates? Oh, yeah, yeah. Remember that? She was yep. like, <laughs> he opens it. He's just like, oh, uh, he smirks like, oh. Uh. And he had it. Remember when they show his apartment? It was like yep. right on top of his coffee yep. table. Yep, he kept it. Uh, 
yeah, he kept it. So it was like a month, like a memory. I'm trying to get that for myself. Are you the dog to put it in in my in my office? You might have it on the Double uh, O Seven store. I don't know how it's much. It's always it sold out. Always oh. sold out. Yeah, people buy it. It's just a it's just a cool mod, like thing to have in your office. I guess. Yeah. I it's just one of those cool, no. cool collectors thing. Yeah. Here's what here's what I want from the future. Next year is the 60th anniversary. Release them all in 4K. Well, it's already in 4K. The the Craig Craig ones. Oh, they're in digital. No, no. Physically, you got all the Craig ones, but in digitally, you got it from all the way in one, all the way to the newest one. I want them all physically. (laughs) I do too, but I'm afraid that thing is going to cost $500. Because think about it. You got nine movies for Star Wars at $250. Yeah. So you're getting 25 Bond movies but think, at a price of five. You're gonna get hey, 25. But, but think, yeah, of, think about it with Star Wars though. It's nine. It's technically you're getting two copies of each movie, so that's 18 discs plus three bo- plus a bonus disc for each movie. So that's 27 discs. 250 for 27 discs ain't bad. Yeah, but now you're getting 25 4K discs plus 25 Blu-ray discs yeah. plus. The bonus unless, features unless if they only go 4K, who knows? Unless they might release them like they did with the Ultimate DVD collection, which is volume one, two, three, and four, yeah. then that'd be more cheaper. And then it's going to piss me off because, you know, the one that has all the popular movies is going to sell out faster than the other ones yeah. that you don't want. Yeah. So it's like, a, I say something, sell it by bonds. Sean Connery yeah. era, Roger Moore. You know, Pierce, everyone's gonna buy it to complete the set, but put them in a put them in a box set that has a cool artwork. So when you put them together, it becomes this big giant poster. I have, when you have it in your wall. I have I have the Bond fifty set, but if they release like a new set with uh, with all of them in four K, I'm gonna get it. But I'm not getting rid of my Bond fifty set. I got the ultimate DVD set. I have the ultimate uh, the fifty year anniversary Blu Ray, and yeah. then I'm waiting for the entire four K. Cause I'm gonna buy them all. I mean, regardless of yeah. what it is. Yeah, well, but, I want to get I want to get the ultimate editions back because I gave them away. But I want to get them back because I'm j- I just want to put like a little like area in my spare room where it's just all Bond, you know. Yeah, I got the anthology archive Bond book. Oh, nice. I had to send you a photo of it. I don't yeah. know if you. I want to get. I don't know if I send it to you. The official store. I think it's up for pre order. They have the official film guide coming soon. That I would pick up. That I would pick up. That the the archive I got is where I buy my statues from. Okay. They had it for eighty dollars. It was on sale, cool. and I was like, I'm jumping on this. And I brought the. I just brought it. I was like, oh, and it's a cool archive. You open it, there's like screenshots of. Um, I'm sorry, the 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 storyboards of the movies. Oh, nice. And then you got the script. Then you got the production schedules, and then you got them behind the scenes. So like, I love it. I I think it's pretty cool, and I think you would. I think you would enjoy it too. I'll send you some screenshots yeah, of the inside. Um, what's your favorite movie? Uh, favorite Bond movie? Yeah. Uh, Skyfall. All right. So then I'll send you the insides of okay. Skyfall. And All then right. you can see what it looks like. And All then right. you might buy it. I mean, I don't know. You might just want to be like, right, you know what? I'm <laughs> getting it to put it. And yeah. I'll send you the link. It might be still cheap. Okay. Um, and maybe they still have it because I know those things were going. But yeah. Yeah. All right, so I think that's going to wrap up the retrospective here for the Daniel Craig era. We talked a lot. We didn't we didn't get into each individual movie, but we kind of sporadically talked about them, uh, which I think actually benefited this video in the end. Um, but uh, where can they find you on your uh, YouTube channel and your podcast? Yeah, so if you want to check it out, uh, we have a brand new YouTube channel. It's Action Movie Guys on YouTube. I mean, they just search it up because right now, since we're not at the 100, we don't have that custom link. So we're working our way to get to that custom link. So there we're turning, I'm turning all our video uh, podcasts that we do audio. We always record with video. So I'm trying to do as much editing as possible to get those things up. So you guys can be current from our first all the way up to our latest, which is episode 70, um, which is Raid Redemption from 2011, I believe that movie came out um so i have all that footage so i'm working really fast to try to get it up there and then while we're doing that i've been trying to do some movie reviews here and there just to keep the flow of of the channel going Mm -hmm. so i had um peppermint the rhythm section 
um so far i did and then black widow me and nate together on the day it released we did a, our movie review together um which is there and then of course if you want to take us on the go which you want to go to a gym or you're working out or you're doing whatever um it's action movie guys also on spotify apple podcast again one through 70 or audio you can have fun it's more condensed um version of the video because the video i put stats and the photos and all that right, shit, right. jazz where the audio is very condensed short less than 30 minutes um the later ones are, are when we first started it was like 34 40 but now that me and nate got the rhythm going now it's less than 24 minutes each episode uh we got the formula down pat nice all right, all right. You guys can find me at my official website, and I have my OnlyFans account. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> OnlyFans. <laughs> um, no, you can find me here on my channel. I got some uh, reviews coming uh, very soon for you guys. Um, trying to compile a compilation video of movies I missed uh, this year. So trying mm. to watch all those as quick as possible. So stay tuned for more reviews on my channel. You guys are the best. Thank you for watching. My name is Alex. That is also Alex. Well, we'll see you guys <laughs> somewhere. There you go. Oh.